There have been a lot of fresh breakout stars in the NBA bubble since it began. You've got Shake Milton, the entire Phoenix Suns team, shout out to Cameron Payne, the non-player essential workers in the bubble, of course excluding the heinous referees, Shea Gilgis Alexander, the wings at Magic City, Joel Santana who's not an NBA player or even in the bubble but he just got out of prison so he gets a shout out, Gary Trent Jr., I could go on. But there has not been a bigger breakout star than Michael Porter Jr. and what he's doing right now. And there was a lot of national media fanfare around the Nuggets heading into the bubble. Some small amount around Michael Porter Jr., some of it around the Nuggets being a 3 seed and a serious contender to win the NBA title, but most of it, most of it, on Nikola Jokic's summer beach bod and bowl bowl showcasing his talents in the preseason and at practice. But once the season started, Michael Porter Jr. said, GIVE ME THAT SHIT! and took all the attention and the spotlight onto himself with his stellar play. Yeah, Mike! Not including yesterday's game where MPJ dropped the measly 27 points and 12 boards in a loss to the Blazers, his previous two games resulted in back-to-back 30-point, 10-rebound games, and our friends at Basketball Reference noted that recent rookies to have done something similar include Blake Griffin, Shaq, the Admiral, and Hakeem. But Basketball Reference's work didn't stop there as they also pointed out that the 5 most recent rookies to have a 30 plus point and 15 plus rebound game include LeBron, Blake Griffin, Carl Anthony Towns, Ben Simmons, and Ryan Hollins. Oh no no no, sorry folks, I don't know how Hollins got on that list. Of course, the 5th rookie in that list to record that feat is of course Michael Porter Jr. I apologize for the mistake on Ryan Hollins and it won't happen again. In the bubble currently, MPJ is averaging 26.25 points per game and 10 boards per game. But it wasn't always smooth sailing for Michael Porter Jr. A highly touted prospect, number one on Rivals and number two on ESPN, he went to Missouri to join forces with his brother Jonte and his dad Michael Porter Sr. who was an assistant coach there. Despite all the hype around Missouri and Porter, nothing went to plan for his first and only year at Missouri. He injured his back after only two minutes of play in the home opener against Iowa State my clones. His injury on his back required surgery and he was sidelined until February where he was eventually allowed to practice with the team. He would eventually play two more games for Missouri, one in the SEC tournament and one in the NCAA tournament, a loss to Florida State before he declared for the draft. Despite playing only three games and one of these games he played less than two minutes, MPJ declared for the draft with a big question mark around his name. The talent was certainly there and without an injury history he easily could have been a potential number one overall pick. However most teams drafting early in the draft looked at him as an injury liability as if he was Samuel L. Jackson's character Mr. Glass in Unbreakable. The Nuggets saw through that facade and looked at him as if he was Jules Winfield, Samuel L. Jackson's character in Pulp Fiction. Again, talent was never in question, it was mostly injury history. For example, if MPJ had a role on the team in Samuel L. Jackson's movie Coach Carter, Coach Carter, played by Samuel L. Jackson, would have given MPJ a significant amount of minutes and he'd have been a star on that team. He was never thought to be a scrub like Samuel L. Jackson's character in Goodfellas who sleeps in, fucks up the operation, and then gets killed like a bitch by Joe Pesci. No, he can actually play. And like I said in a previous video with the rise of Bull Bull, check it out, link in the description, the Nuggets adhered to the strategy the last two drafts of picking the best player overall regardless of injury history. Of course, you get Bull Bull, the most recent draft, and Michael Porter Jr. in 2018. And looking back at the 2018 draft, clearly, 13 players were picked ahead of Michael Porter Jr. Some of them great players, but I'm sure a lot of teams are kicking themselves, thinking they should have taken the risk on Michael Porter Jr. Like the Knicks selecting Kevin Knox 9th overall. Really? Really? God forbid the Knicks ever break out of their shell and actually take a risk one of these days. What the hell do you have to lose? Dolan, I'm coming for you. But the Nuggets were clearly taking it slow with MPJ as he sat out his first year and got a second surgery shortly after being drafted. He'd be redshirting his first season and began his rookie year as a second year member of the NBA this past fall. And pre-bubble he was actually playing pretty well as Mike Malone, coach Mike Malone that is, slowly eased him into the speed of the NBA. According to Forbes he was averaging 5.3 points, 2.8 boards in 9.8 minutes pre-January 1st. But post January 1st, post the new year, he was averaging 12.3 points, 6.9 boards, and 21.4 minutes. He was snubbed from being selected in the Rising Stars game, which I'm sure stung at the time but won't mean shit in the long run. And he suffered an ankle injury late January against the Bucks, and since then he got less and less minutes, which completely makes sense from a coaching and a managerial standpoint. You've got a player here who if not for injury history was destined to potentially be the first overall pick. Maybe it's not the best idea to run him into the ground like the Redskins, well the team formerly known as the Redskins, did to Robert Griffin III. 
Then COVID hit, everything went to shit, and when the dust settled and humanity was still here, people wanted to watch some basketball. And like I said before, all the national media attention on the Nuggets Michael Porter Jr. has completely absorbed, and with the sports world's eye on him, because they got nothing better to do, he has risen to the occasion as if he's Nate Diaz choking out Conor McGregor in the second round at UFC 196. And everything Michael Porter Jr. did so well for the Nuggets this season in limited minutes pre-COVID, he seemed to only improve at post-COVID. In the bubble, his field goal percentage is 57.8% and his three-point percentage is 50%. That compared to his pre-COVID average of 49.5%. 5% from the field and 42% from three means he's shooting a lot lot better in the bubble. And it's not like his numbers weren't solid before but now he's doing it on even more attempts. He's averaging 16 field goal attempts per game in the bubble compared to 5.9 pre-bubble. Right now he's also averaging 7.5 threes attempted per game compared to 2.1 pre-COVID. Now I'm not Stephen Hawking folks, I know I may have duped some of you with my ingenious videos. But despite not being Stephen Hawking, my math skills indicate that he's, I would say, more than doubled his amount of attempts per game, maybe even tripled. Not to mention in the bubble, he is currently shooting 94.1% from the free throw line compared to 76.7% pre-COVID. And there is a theory floating around that shooters are getting hot in the bubble due to the lighting focusing only on the court and not showing in the areas where there would normally be cheering, lively, and moving fans. Devin Booker even said, I feel like it's a hooper's gym. It's easier to shoot in here with less depth perception. I love the setup that they have for us. And based on how Booker and the Suns are playing lately, I'll buy that. And if you think this theory is true, you better mention MPJ in your conclusion when talking about the theory's provability. This man has taken his already good shooting to a whole nother level. Alright, here's the scouting report. MPJ is a pure shooter. We've known it since high school. On offense with his incredible handles and good speed for someone who is 6'10", paired with his reach, size, and shooting ability, he's going to be very hard to stop. Like any young player rising through the ranks and doing well, teams will eventually game plan for you, and they did so when the Nuggets played the Blazers the other night. Coach Mike Malone noted that MPJ needs to get stronger and learn how to create space, as the Blazers were pressing him pretty effectively, but he still managed to put up 27 points and 12 boards. His rebounding ability is exceptional and is a threat to score anywhere, whether it's just a putback in the paint or a deep three. And one thing I liked about the bubble is all the out of area broadcasts I've been watching. One free promotion I saw Wendy's and the Denver Nuggets offer is one free double stack burger if any player on the Denver Nuggets can manage a double double. And so far MPJ has managed that three out of the four times he's played. Obviously Wendy's couldn't have fathomed the rise of Michael Porter Jr. like this and they may want to reconsider not only from a financial standpoint but from a public health standpoint moving forward. One double stack burger is 1400 calories and that on top of whatever fucking shit you're ordering from Wendy's, if the people of Denver are eating this three out of every four games, maybe every game in the bubble moving forward, they're going to have a serious public health crisis on their hands on top of all this COVID shit. Denver's adult obesity rate is 17% compared to a national average of 40%, and if this promotion continues into the playoffs and into next year, they haven't specified how long it'll go on for, the city of Denver is going to get really fat and match those national obesity rates, all because Wendy's had the audacity to doubt Michael Porter Jr. Lives will be lost, and the blood from clogged arteries is on your hands, Wendy. Alright, now looking at the weaknesses, while his basic offensive reactions of going to the NBA are going over pretty well, his defensive reactions are still slow to adjust. In some cases on defense in the bubble, I'll be watching him and just wondering what the fuck are you doing. As Coach Malone said, he needs to put on a little bit more weight to get a little bit stronger, and as I said, he does more than make up for it on the offensive end, but it's still something he could improve at. He definitely needs to improve that if he wants to be a top player. And of course, his passing is getting a little bit better. He can pass. He doesn't have too many assists per game. He can pass, but that would definitely be a much-needed skill set to get to that top level. Add more tricks to your toolkit. Now lastly, MPJ's performance in the bubble has been incredible and if Rookie of the Year voting took place in the bubble, he'd definitely be getting some down ballot votes as he deserved it. But for many teams in the bubble, including the Nuggets, a big part of the early games are just easing back into the play of things, getting a lot of inexperienced guys more experience. I don't think we'll see a scenario like the other night against the Blazers where Nikola Jokic doesn't play at all down the stretch as Bol Bol eats into his minutes. I tend to doubt that that will happen in a meaningful game. That combined with the fact that Will Barton, Jamal Murray, and Gary Harris are all guys who average more than 30 minutes per game on the Suns and are scoring threats are currently nursing injuries. When they are coming back still remains to be seen, but when they do come back, they will definitely eat into MPJ's production and minutes. 
he almost certainly won't be as dependent on as he is now, but when they do come back, the Nuggets will still count on him, and I'll tell you why. Barton, Murray, and Harris all shoot well below 40% from the three, with the highest being Barton at 37.5 and Harris to the lowest with 33.3%. A shooter of MPJ's caliber will be counted on in crucial games in one of the most competitive NBA playoff landscapes to date. Denver is a serious contender at the three seed gunning for that two seed, but for MPJ this will just be a chapter in his big book of basketball as he will go on to have a great career assuming he can stay healthy. You look back on the lottery selections and you see so many great players drafted in 2018 like Trey Young, Shea Gilgis Alexander, DeAndre Ayton, Luka Doncic, Jaron Jackson get well soon. And now MPJ joins them as guys who are the future of the NBA. It just goes to show what happens when someone is given a second chance. You just wonder what Jan Hus could have accomplished in his life if the Catholics actually decided to listen to him rather than burning him at the stake in the 1400s. Alright Finn, okay website, social media, RIP Curtis Mayfield we're out.